Well, hello, gold lovers, YouTubers of all sorts. Mike here. Welcome back to my channel, and it's time for another episode where the Smash-O-Matic is going to be front and center, and we're going to run a lot of ore through it today. At least I hope it's ore. Um, this is stuff we got from a quartz outcrop I found when I was out exploring, and it was right on the edge of a creek that's known for having placer gold in it. And I'm hoping that the stuff we're going to run through this today has some of that gold in it. It's, it's the source of some of the gold in the creek, at least some of it. We'll see. Anyway, I'll tell you more about that once we get to the panning stage. Uh, let me show you what I've got going on with the smash matic today. You know, in the, in the last episode, it got its paint job, and uh, it's all gussied up. Well, I've been running it pretty heavy since then, and I'm pretty happy with the way it's working. Uh, we'll give it a real test today. We'll run a lot of hard quartz through it. But uh, someone suggested in an, the earlier video that I should connect it up to a dust deputy. Well, guess what? That was always in the plan, because I have a dust deputy. So I was just too eager to test the smash o so I didn't get around to it. And yes, this will help, because the uh, filter in my little vacuum over there clogs up way too soon if I just use it to uh, pull the pulverized rock dust out of the smash matic So we've got the uh, we've got the dust deputy cyclone separator here in line. So we will uh, try running some rock through with the uh, dust deputy in line today and see how well it goes. Okay, let me get set up and we'll start running some rock through this thing. Let me tell you about another change I've made. It was actually there in the last video, but I didn't tell anybody about it. Um, I have mounted the smash o -matic on a plate down here that has a lip overhanging on both sides. Makes it much easier to clamp down to the table I'm working on. And I'm thinking about actually putting the crushing chamber on some um, rubber supports to try and take the vibration out, keep from transmitting it down to whatever it's sitting on. But anyway, it doesn't vibrate the clamps loose like it did with the clamps I had on there before. These are all still good and tight. So that's good. All right. And I guess that's about it for changes since last time. So let's get to rock crushing, huh? I got a big bag of ore over here. At least, I, like I said, I hope it's ore. Pulled it out of that quartz exposure. This is a beautiful location, too. I'll put a link in the upper right corner to where we found this stuff on the side of a creek, on a bluff above the creek. I went out there to explore and uh, decided this was a good scenic place to stop and have a picnic and saw this quartz exposure and my wife and I went back later and collected all this material because it's well mineralized. I expect there will be a lot of sulfides in here. I just hope there's some uh, free milling quartz too. Okay, let's get started. Get the vacuum going.
it's a big one. I don't know if it'll handle it. I guess we'll find out. No problem. Okay, I think you're getting the idea. So I'm going to run enough of this material over here to get a decent sized sample to pan out. Maybe two or three pans worth. So I've got some kind of idea just what all's in this stuff. And um, if it looks really good, I'll come back and do the rest of it. But uh, you don't have to watch me feed rocks into this thing for the next 15 minutes. I'll meet you over at the panning table once I'm done and I've got my good representative sample, okay? So let me get started again over here. Vacuum. Smash some more rocks! Okay, I've run close to half that bag of material through there. Let's see what's inside the old dust deputy here. Okay, I think I got everything I need for pan in here. I got my favorite pan. I've got my loop. I've got my snuffer bottle. Got some jet driver in the water. We'll talk about why that's important in a minute. I also got a bigger pan here and a 10 to the inch screen or sieve or classifier, whatever you want to call it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sieve some of this stuff we just ground up. Because there is a 3 16 inch screen on the outlet of the uh, smash matic So some larger bits do get through and they interfere with the panning. Panning goes easier but what you're doing is all roughly the same size, so we'll just pan out some of this oversized stuff. And I need to apologize for the background noise. I hear you. I hope you can hear me okay. I got construction going on over here on my stepson's house, which is just on the next lot over. They're working on it. And then my stepson himself over on the other side is uh, working on his boat trailer, grinding and pounding on it and generally making a hellacious noise. So hopefully you can hear me. Now that the smash o -matic's turned off, I'm not the noisy guy on the block anymore. So yeah, there's some oversized stuff. Not too bad. I can always run it back through the smash o -matic if I decide this stuff has uh, got good value to it, okay? So I'm going to put some of this stuff that's just sieved in my favorite panning pan over here. And we'll commence to panning in a second. Okay, I'm going to put some jet dry in the water. That helps break up the water surface tension. That does a couple of things for us. Um, whether I'm running stuff through the Mighty Mill or the smash o -matic, it tends to turn a lot of it into something as fine as baby powder. And when the stuff's that fine, it wants to be a little hydrophobic. It doesn't really want to wet well. The uh, jet dry will help with that. It'll help it all wet. And it will also help prevent fine gold from floating. Because fine gold will float. If there's a... Uh, it'll float on the surface tension of the water. Especially if there's any uh, oils around that could have got on it. Like from my own skin or from any kind of debris in the water. And as you can tell, I've used this water before. So, it's been sitting out here a couple days. There could be various debris in it. The jet dry helps a lot. It's pretty much essential when you're panning. So, let's get a look here and see if there's anything good in this stuff. First pan of it anyway. We probably got three or four pans. I think must have ran more material than I thought. That, uh, it's amazing how much the uh, volume of the material increases when you uh, pulverize it into a powder. I think that half a bag of rocks has turned into a, a bag and a half of powder. Oh, I need one other thing. I don't have everything I need for, for this. I need to get my magnet and pull the, uh, pull the iron out of this. There's going to be Bits of iron that have come out of the smash o -matic, and there's also probably some 
some magnetite in here that I can pull out. So let me go find my mining magnet. I'll be right back. All right, got my mining magnet now. Yeah, see what I can pull out of this stuff. Oh yeah, Smash-O-Matic slowly destroys itself as it works. All mills do. All impact mills do. Ball mills, the balls get smaller until they're too small to use. Rod mills, the ball, the rods get skinnier. Flail mills, the flays, flails slowly fall apart. Hammer mills, the hammer mills, hammers get the, the corners knocked off of them until they're too rounded to use anymore. So, yep. It's the cost of doing business. Ooh, my stepson's really going at it over there. I'm a little bit proud of the boy. When I first married his mother, he didn't know which end of a screwdriver to hold. I'm learning the kids few, a few useful things. They don't teach them anything useful in school anymore. You know, I had it all. I had metal shop, I had wood shop, I had small engine repair, I had electronics. I had computer lab. Poor kid didn't have any of that. No practical skills. Doesn't have any tools either. He's using my tools over there, but he's doing okay. I show him once or twice and he picks it up pretty quick. Kids these days. Makes you worry about What's going to happen when our generation's gone and none of them know how to do anything? Anyway, I was going to tell you about this stuff. Yeah, um, I was out exploring a really beautiful area of the mountains of Wyoming. And uh, had been out there at it for quite a few hours and decided it was time to stop and have a lunch break. I had a little picnic lunch with me and I saw a scenic spot overlooking... I saw a scenic spot on a high bluff overlooking a creek. We'll give you the creek name. No spoilers. And um, stopped there and uh, was eating and walking around and just enjoying the view and looking around and right out at the edge of the bluff about, oh, I don't know, 50, 60 feet above the creek over a sheer drop, I looked down and wow, there's this quartz vein popping out of the ground. There's a bunch of schist exposed there, and there's a nice, heavily mineralized quartz vein in the schist. And I thought, oh, okay, that's nice. Too bad I don't have any stuff for sampling with me. I didn't have my rock hammer, I didn't have any bags, anything. But I remembered where that spot was. And then a few months later, when my wife and I were back in Wyoming, we went out there, and... Uh, we sampled that area pretty good because that quartz vein looked really nice. A lot of mineralization there. I'm seeing some sulfides in the pan. Pretty obviously some sulfides there. And I think I, I think I put a link in the upper right earlier. It should still be there. You want to check that out. We visited some mines. We visited some other sites when we were out there that day. Let me look at this with my loop. Looking promising. I don't see any gold yet, but let me see if I can concentrate it in one place and get rid of this rest some more of this debris here and some more of these sulfides and see what's what's under them. It's a really beautiful spot too. I mean, my goodness, it's gorgeous out there on that bluff overlooking that creek and nice valley on the other side. When we were out there taking the samples, it was it was full of wildlife. There were a bunch of uh, pronghorn antelope out there. There were cows too, but there were pronghorns. It's a really nice area. Okay, I'm gonna have to take this out in the sun and look at it. My panning area here is in the shade. Hard to hard to see anything. Alright, I'll be right back. 
Well, there's some gold in there. Most of this stuff is sulfides, but above the sulfides, right at the corner, between the top of the sulfides and the corner of the pan, there's there's some flakes of gold in there. I mean, not a huge amount. There's a fairly big piece right there. But yeah, there's some flakes of gold in this stuff. Yeah. There's actually a lot of little bitty tiny flakes. I don't know if they're showing up on the uh, camera, but I could see them with my loop. Okay. Cool. Let me get this snuffered up. All right. Good deal. There's some gold here. I am a little surprised. I was half expecting to get totally skunked because it was a gold mining area. And I know that the old timers, they were always looking for the source of the placer gold. And there were a lot of hard rock mines in that area that the miners, you know, they'd followed the placer gold upstream until they found the places where the the quartz was outcropping that was had the gold in it. I don't know how they missed this spot. Maybe they didn't miss it. Maybe it wasn't there back then. You know, with all of the overgrazing that's gone on out west in the last 100, 150 years, the erosion has gotten a lot worse. That that section of the bluff might not have just been exposed 150 years ago when people were out there finding those mines back in early Wyoming history. I don't know. But we found that's a spot that doesn't look like anybody's ever mined. And there is some gold there. I mean, it's not a huge amount, but there is some gold there. So, uh... Let me keep working my way through this sample here and see if it looks like there's enough gold to make it worthwhile crushing up the rest of the rock. Um, I've sucked it all up with my snuffer bottle. Not just the gold, but all those sulfides in there too, because they might contain some gold in them. So let's get some more of this material in the pan and get it panned out. Panning is always a lot more fun when you actually find some gold. I mean, panning is fun even if you're getting skunked, generally. Especially if you're doing it out on a stream somewhere, out in a beautiful spot, out in nature. You know, having a good time. Kind of like fishing, you know? Even if you don't catch anything, you can have a good time. But, uh, I'll tell you what, it's a lot more fun when there is some sparkly stuff in the bottom of your pan. That's for sure. Anyway, I won't make you watch this whole thing. I will pan this down to the nitty gritty and sh tell you what I find and show it to you if I can. Alright? Let me get out in the sun here where hopefully this will show up. Yeah. There's a lot of little flakes of gold in there. I mean, they are small. There's no doubt about it. I hope they're in focus. I'm out in the sun. It's hard to see the viewfinder. Yeah, it's, there's a lot of little flakes of gold in there. They're small. There's no doubt about it. They're small. Not getting rich over here. But, you know, I'm not processing that much rock in this either. So this is pan number two. Let's see what's in pan number three. Okay, so, so far two good pans. Um, I cleaned out the dust deputy really good. There wasn't as much material in left in it as I thought, so we got one more fairly big pan here, it looks like. Yeah, I cleaned it out really good so there's no cross-contamination because I may run a different sample through it next rather than more of this stuff. Because we took a lot of samples while we were out west. And I'm working my way through them. You know, trying to figure out where we want to go when we go back. We have limited time, you know, and want to go to the places that have the best showing. Eventually, I'm sh I will process all this material, I'm sure. But... I just want to make sure that we use our time to our best advantage when we're out there next time and go to the places that have the most gold. Like in an earlier video, which I will put a link to in the upper right, I processed some material that we got out of the ore bin of an old closed down mine out there that's been closed for a long time. And that material just been sitting in that ore bin forever, growing weeds out of it. It was the last material they took out of the mine before they shut it down. They never processed it. And that was some of the richest gold I've ever seen in, in this ore I've brought back. So 
we're definitely going back there. That's number one on the list. We need to go back there and clean out that ore bin. And one or two other places where I've uh, run this stuff we need to go back to. And one or two other places we may not bother after I've run this stuff. So we'll see. Okay, I will pan this down and I will give you a look at what's left. Okay, third and final pan, if I can get the light right and get everything to focus. There's a fair amount of gold over here along the left side of that pile of sulfides. Get in there and focus, you. Jeez. And along the top of the pile of sulfides and over in here there's a few bigger flakes. So, yeah, not too bad. I mean, uh, it's not a huge amount of gold coming out of that stuff. Certainly I've processed some material we brought back that has more gold in it, but that's, you know, hey, didn't get skunked anyway. That's great. Well, all righty. Three pans with uh, good stuff in them. Excellent. Well, let me get this stuff sucked up in my snuffer bottle. Let me see, did I get it all? And no, I did not get it all. It's a little bit more good stuff there. Okay. So, yeah, there's gold in each pan. Um, definitely not the best sample that we brought back from Wyoming this last time. So I'm not going to put this spot super high on our priority list for returning to, but on the other hand, it's really easy to get to and it's on the way to some other places I want to go. So we might stop in there and get a little bit more, possibly. I will crush up the rest of that bag of material through the uh, Smash-O-Matic and see what I get out of it and then make a final decision. But uh, I would say this is somewhere somewhere low on the priority list. Not as low as the places that had no showing of gold at all, but not anywhere near as high as the places where I saw a lot of gold. So uh, somewhere in the middle. Ease of access is definitely a plus because we can get back to that place without too much trouble at all. Um, it's right off the road, not much chance of getting stuck in the mud if it's been wet. I had a thought, and you guys let me know what you think. Give it a thumbs up, a thumbs down, whatever. I had a thought about um, getting some of this material from Wyoming, grinding it up in the smash o -matic, and maybe selling little bags of pay dirt for people to pan out at home. Let me know if you're interested in that, or if you think it's a stupid idea, okay? so. Let me know. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think of what I'm doing here. Always open to suggestions and constructive criticism too. So uh, go ahead and comment away. Anyway, this video, um, I'm shooting it a couple of days before New Year's. It usually takes me a day or two to get a video edited together and released. So it'll probably come out around New Year's Day. So Happy New Year to everybody out there who's watching my videos. And I hope to have a bunch of new videos for you next year to watch too. And I hope you found this video interesting, educational, informative, killed some time, whatever. Give it a like, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to see my future videos. There'll be more videos with the smash o -Matic, more with the Mighty Mill, and there's going to be some more e-waste recovery videos coming real soon now. So check those out, subscribe to see them, and press that little bell icon YouTube wants you to press so you'll be notified when new videos come out. Check out my uh, second channel, Electric Geek 64 There's good stuff going on there pretty much every day lately. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching this one. Bye.